ERC, quality service since 1972. Repairing TVs, console stereos, electronic musical instruments, pinball machines, arcade games, and more. Call 836-0454. This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Monday, the 9th of February. James Spann here. Busy week, busy time of the year. Storm Alert 2009 rolls along. This week, we're coming to Jasper. We'll be at the CHS building downtown on the 12th. That's this Thursday. We've already been to Utah and Trustville. And then next week, we're coming to Oxford, the Oxford Civic Center. Of course, all the shows are free, and uh, you'll get some cool stuff to take home. Meet the weather team. Have a great time. We hope to see you there. Skycam shots around the network this afternoon. There's a look at the milky sky coming from Clanton. Those are mid- and high-level clouds up at about 20,000 feet today. Same sky from Gadsden, almost identical. Up in uh, northeast Alabama and Etowah County, off in the distance, you can see the Coosa River. And down in Livingston, down in Sumter County, the uh, little field of cumulus clouds developing down there is the moisture is deeper down in the low levels. And again, Wednesday will be the focus day this week. Right now, one uh, short wave lifting well to the northwest of Alabama, not really impacting us. Uh, the, the next one is going to be the one to watch. That's the one digging down through California. Of course, it's spring-like. That's what everybody's talking about. Look at the red freeze line way up there in Canada. The big thaw, but don't get used to it. We'll be back in the cold air later this month, no doubt about that. Here's our watch warning map. Uh, wind advisories for much of the southern plains, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and then you got winter storm warnings out west. The mountains of Arizona, New Mexico. Up north, ice storm warnings for parts of North Dakota and Minnesota. But convection is the big issue. Uh, we'll look at the day one convective outlook. The guys at SPC, they have taken out the risk of severe weather today up north because the air is just too stable to support severe weather. But tomorrow, here comes the main system, and we have a moderate risk now of severe weather around the Arklatex. And uh, surrounding that, a slight risk all the way from uh, central Texas up into the uh, St. Louis area. That includes Memphis. Look at the probabilities, 45% chance of severe weather in that moderate risk. That's a pretty uh, strong possibility, about a 1 in 2 chance anybody in there is going to have some severe weather problems. And then on day 3, Wednesday, all of Alabama in a slight risk, and that includes uh, uh, areas as far north as, uh, say, Cleveland and Indianapolis and uh, Pittsburgh. And as usual, it's your early season deal with excellent dynamics, marginal thermodynamics. And we'll take a specific look in just a moment. There's the QPF chart. Heaviest rain uh, this week will be from the Dallas-Fort Worth area up to near Detroit. Looks like the bullseye might be just south of St. Louis. And around here, the numbers have come up a little bit. That's suggesting one inch of rain. I don't know if we can get that much. I think a half inch might be a better look at Wednesday. I think we'll see a pretty fast-moving squall line that's not going to stick around here for long. But, uh, now keep in mind, this also includes Friday. So maybe that is right. I forgot about that. We do have a little event Friday. This is valid through Saturday morning at 6 o'clock, so I take it back. That might be right. Oh, it's a Monday. Can you tell? This is the, uh, uh, the GFS, the 12Z run, valid at noon tomorrow. The lead shortwave is dampening out over uh, Minnesota. Here comes the next one digging down across the four corners, down below that. Uh, you can see that the initial front is stalled out just northwest of the state. There could be a shower mainly over the Tennessee Valley, I think, tomorrow. A lot like today. Mild, breezy, intervals of sun. Most folks will be dry. Wednesday, boy, that's problematic. Thank goodness this is not April. It's uh, early in the season. That is a negative tilt shortwave blowing through here. And down below that, the surface low is really not too far from Indianapolis with a trailing front. And let's take a look at the instability. Again, there's a little sliver of uh, higher capes in advance of the front. Uh, uh, this valid at midday Wednesday. And that little narrow axis will be in Alabama Wednesday afternoon. I think the main window for strong to severe storms, noon to 6 o'clock. Uh, seems like this run of the uh, wharf, which is where this is coming from, is a little more aggressive. Uh, we see some potential for a few spots in there with surface base capes in excess of 750 joules. And, of course, the helicity, no doubt about that, that's excellent. Uh, that's the veering of the wind in the lowest three kilometers. And uh, you can see that uh, we've got that axis really from uh, Birmingham up I-65 all the way to uh, Indianapolis. And there's no doubt we could see a few spin-up tornadoes in this thing, but I still think it's going to be a highly forced line 
on the front itself or just in advance of that Wednesday afternoon, which means more than likely the primary problem will be from damaging straight-line winds, but there could be a few of those spin-ups in there, so we'll watch that carefully. And then Thursday, it's long gone. I mean, Thursday looks like a beautiful day. No Arctic air. High should be in the 60s. Uh, Probably a mostly sunny day. But look at Friday. Boom. I mean, just like that. Here comes the next impulse. It is a very fast-moving flow pattern. And it's going to make for tricky forecasting uh, in the longer ranges here. No doubt about that. But certainly, we'll need to mention a pretty good chance of rain on Friday. Saturday, that thing is gone. So, again, if you've got some plans for the weekend, it looks like we'll forecast a a partly sunny day Saturday with no rain. And at this point, Sunday looks fine, Uh, mostly sunny and comfortable. That would suggest highs uh, in the low 60s, something like that. And Monday of next week, here comes the next impulse, maybe some rain at that point early next week. But uh, uh, the forecast is going to probably change a little bit as we get closer to the weekend. Uh, We'll go a little deeper into the uh, month. This is the 19th of February, and look what's back. We're beginning to see signs of the Western Ridge Eastern Trough. And, yep, that means the uh, gates are opening back up for cold air. Uh, Down below that, you can see the uh, gates wide open to Canada uh, with a big surface low just off the New England coast. Cold. And looky here toward the end of the cycle on the 24th. Strong trough digging down through here, and uh, whoa, Nelly! Uh, that looks uh, like a bigger snowstorm, doesn't it? We've, we've seen, let's see, this morning we showed you one on the 21st. Now we got one on the 24th. You know, everyone's going to look different, but it's possible. Sure, look at the NAO, North Atlantic Oscillation, bottom chart, strongly negative. So this warming is temporary. What we're trying to say is don't get used to it because no doubt with that, the cold air is coming back. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this afternoon. Notes on the blog. The next video here by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. And, of course, if you're local to us, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 News at 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Again, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful evening, and God bless. 